So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is October the 7th, 2021. The uh, topic for this evening is the purpose of this moment. I actually purposefully <laughs> picked a very, I would say, happy and um, a very happy and playful um, representation, illustration of what it is, the, the purpose of this moment. I, so I, the last, I would say the last uh, couple of weeks or maybe even earlier, uh, what I've been doing on the podcast is really to share my own experience in the moments. Like, like each week, I would go through things and then I would just pick out a theme to share with you. So this, this week, the, the theme that actually came that I, that, um, I focused on is purpose it really is purpose because in the last couple of years i've been very um well i wouldn't say every day i would ask myself this question but you know every, every often enough i would ask myself what is my purpose what is the purpose of this because <clears throat> it seems really strange that um the last few years it it seems to be that I really don't, um, I, okay, let, let me just uh, backtrack a little bit. I remember a time actually when I always know what it is that, that I wanted. So it could be something as simple as I wanted, you know, to, to, to watch that TV show. I wanted to, to buy that dress or live in a certain house or have a kind, certain kind of car or meet that you know, particular kind of man or so, so all of this. So I always, or um, most of the time, I know what I wanted is like, I am more like a wanting machine. Like I, I want, I want, I want. And I have so many things that I want. But then within the last couple of years, I would say that a lot of that dropped off. I, I got, got to the point that, when I really think of the things that I want that are at the very least, the things that I used to want, that I don't want them anymore or how I, <clears throat> the way I feel about the things that I used to really enjoy, I don't have the same kind of enjoyment anymore. And um, so there's been a really shift in my own focus. Um, and so I think that's why I would come back to the question of, so, you know, now that I, I don't have the things that I wanted as before, so what is the purpose of, of life? What do I really want to achieve? Because, you know, I, even though, I am not, a, I can't say that I'm a young woman, but I am still vibrant. I'm, I still feel like there's a lot in me that, that uh, there's a lot more life in me. So, and I want to live a purposeful life. So what is the purpose of my life? I really want to get clearer and clearer <clears throat> how can I, what can I do to best serve um, the humanity? So that has been something that is recurring. Um, that question is recurring in my mind. And, and of course, I've come across um, lots of different, um, more conscious people giving out their ideas that oh we are here to embody our essence we are here to hold uh, a high vibration we are here to assist with the transition um this this big tr transformation that we are all going th through as a collective 
And so I have heard these ideas many times over and, and each person would say something similar, only in different words. And they resonate with me on some level, but I still don't quite grok what these words mean to me on a human level. And I know that I'm missing something. <clears throat> like, how come? Because yes, I on some level, I agree that we are here to embody our essence. Um, but then what does that mean? What does that mean by embodying our essence? So, and then finally, I think, just within the last week or so, I, uh, or even the last couple of days, I, I really, it suddenly started to, I wouldn't say that, that I'm getting it totally now, but I think there is a more clarity, more clarity about what it is that I'm missing, what it is that I, um, why it, it is that even though these words resonate with me on some level. However, I st I'm still missing that human co connection to it. And so that's why I want to talk about this more on this episode is more about what our purpose is in this moment, because this is really a very um, interesting, very transformational times. These are exciting times. These are stressful times. And, and I can quote, I think it is um, Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities, the, the beginning or, or um, towards the beginning of, of the book it mentions that these are the best of times and these are the worst of times. And I completely feel that that's the, that's the case here is that we are living in the best of times and also the worst of times as well. And so I just want to refine my understanding now of what our purpose is. So my current understanding of of our purpose of, um, and I say our purpose because it's not just my purpose. I, I believe that it is everyone's purpose. Everyone who is on earth right now, who is somehow playing on this earth playground right now, my understanding is we have, we all have one purpose and our purpose is really to, um, if we are on earth right now, it is because we are here to live and express our unique soul signature to the best of our abilities. So for me, that's my understanding of our purpose and I'm not too sure whether it, it is, well, I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that it is our purpose, um, not just in this moment, but like any time we incarnate on a playground, whether it is earth or anywhere else, any time we take on a form, it is to do this. It is to live and express our unique soul signature to the best of our abilities. So what does that mean? So what is our unique soul signature? Um, I have to say that I don't know in this moment what my unique soul signature is. And I think this is really the, the, the nature of our unique soul signature is that it is something that is always and forever eternally unfolding. That we are not just one thing and one signature, or we, we are not just one um, static thing. 
However, there is something unique, even though it is not static. And that this is what's within us. This is each of our soul has this uniqueness that is always unfolding. And, and because this is an energy, this is a, an energetic signature that is always unfolding. And even though we cannot put our finger on it, but there is always signs. It leaves a trail in clues about the nature of that so signature of that uniqueness and and i think for the um i think for the the most general way of saying it is that when we follow our joy then we are actually following our unique so signature because when we are aligned with that with that energy, with that, the, with that energy complex that represents our unique soul signature. When we are aligned with it, we can feel that energy that is coming through that we can recognize as joy because of alignment. So anytime when we are aligned with this energy, we would start to experience that as something that we describe as joy. And yet it is not easy to, 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 to really understand what joy is because there have been many disinformation and distortion about what brings us joy. Um, we, we've been living in this society that is on a lot of levels um, so distorted and there's been so much trauma, collective trauma, that we actually forgot what it is to, to be aligned with ourselves. And we, um, sometimes we, or I say, should say a lot of the times we actually mistaken um, temporary satisfaction as joy. So what truly brings us joy? And what, for me, what truly brings joy is freedom to express our being when we are free to be who we are from the inside out, then that brings us joy. And um, so that comes back to the, the, the idea of freedom. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but um, Freedom is, is not easy to come by these days. It, the truth actually is that we have not lived in a free environment for a long time. It is just that we, <clears throat> we have been tricked to think that we are free, but actually we have not lived in a free environment for a long time. And I know, you know, there are many um, people that says that, oh, we are in a prison, we live on a prison planet, and, you know, we, the, the cabal and all of those. But actually, the truth is that we are the ones who have created our own imprisonment. From, from what I know, that we are actually the, the ones who have created this this box that we are in from the moment that we came into this world we have adopted the ideas that these people who um who <clears throat> hold us and feed us and play with us that these people are our only family and that we believe 
<clears throat> and and because of that, that you know, we want we feel that we need to tick on their beliefs because they're family. So in order for us to be accepted, we have to be like them. So we somehow felt that we need to take on their beliefs. We, in order to survive, that we need their love in order to thrive. And um, I think I recognize now that that is a, um, a trauma response. The more I think about it, the, the more I recognize the truth. And the truth is that we don't just have one set of parents and that we don't have just these limited group of people that we, that these are our family. And this, and that each child, each one, each of us is really a child of earth, of the universe. And each one of us belong to all of us. Each one belong to the whole human collective. And each of this body is really mother earth's baby. And it is actually our collective trauma that convinced us that we are disconnected, then that only the people that are around us are our family, and that we can only rely on those people and, and, and anyone else is really not, that they are, they are more of a threat than they are um, our family. So, so, so let me explain a little bit about what do I mean by collective trauma, because I've, I've kind of brought this up um, a few times e this evening. So I just want to, to quickly give a summary of what it is, because I've talked about this, I think, in previous podcasts earlier in the year. I remember I talked about Atlantis. Um, so Atlantis is or was a, a civilization or more precisely, it was an experiment, an experiment to um, rap rapidly grow the, the, the consciousness of the, um, all the people that took place in this experiment. So that was the, that was the, um, experiment of Atlantis. And, um, and so a lot of um, high level sacred knowledge was used. Um, so some of it is really geomancy. So using sacred geometry, but in, um, in the way that it's, it's the land to, to, to somehow used the land in sacred geometry in a way that will facilitate the, 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 the growth of consciousness of the people that are in that ge geographic location. So that's one of the, the one of the many um, really, I would say more mystical knowledge to rapidly grow our consciousness. However, the Atlantis experiment, maybe because it was not, um, it was not defined timing yet for this experiment to achieve its goal at that time. So the whole experiment ended up in um, catastrophe, and there actually was a, a tear in the, the the fabric of reality, in that the the dimensions were. Um, cut were, were, were divided so much. And that actually, that means that for a lot of people, their, our consciousness in Atlantis all of a sudden just um, 
at a high level, it was at a high level, but all of a sudden it just plunged, just fell. And as a result, we have to start from scratch. Our, um, so we actually have to start from scratch in, in that we lost all of our, our um, conscious knowledge. And we have to start from even this very simple thing like fire, like being able to um, use fire to cook food, something like that, something as simple as that. We forgot how to do it. We were like, we fell to the, 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 the part where we consciously, we were like a newborn baby. We know nothing. We, we cannot even take care of ourselves. We, so we know nothing. So we got to that part. And it was from there that we, that we um, have to grow our consciousness right from the ground up again. So that was actually a collective trauma that that is what I was referring to. So a lot of our fears, a lot of um, what we needed to do at that time um, when our consciousness was so low in order to survive, all of those things was because of a, um, a trauma from that, kind of stemming from that period of time. And it, of course, brings us up to now in this moment. So why is it that our purpose for incarnating on earth in this in this moment is really to live and express our unique soul signature to the best of our abilities. Why is that such so important? And that's because just by living our soul's unique qualities to the best of our abilities, just by doing that, we bring light, we bring the light of the creator back to earth. And when we bring enough light of the creator back onto this playground, this playground can heal itself up. That our consciousness, um, the tear in our consciousness can be healed again so that we can get back to where we were before and even go higher as well. So that is the reason why it is so important for us to live our unique soul signature. And I know it may not seem easy to, to live and be that free and to allow ourselves to live our unique soul signature. And part of the reason, or a lot of the reason, is because um, of this disconnection, that we are disconnected from Mother Earth. We are disconnected from the human collective. We really need to remember again, that we are a child of Mother Earth. It is really time for us to remember that we are always supported. Because if we are not supported, we cannot even get on to take on a body on Earth in this moment, if we're not supported. And if the, the Earth Collective does not want our energy here. We can't even get in. That's so that's that really will tell you something. <clears throat> and that you don't have to you don't have to cater to anyone. You don't have to need anyone else approval. By virtue of you being on earth, you need to know that 
if you're not supported, you won't even get here. And because you're here, that you will always be supported by Earth and always be supported by the Earth Collective. It is not Earth and it is not the, the, the collective that does not support us. It is the, the disconnection within ourselves that um, allowed all these fear, allowed all these needing approval, needing support to creep into our understanding. So this is really what I got. And, and the, um, the disinformation and the, all of this disconnection, um, this information disconnection, it, it actually comes in many forms. I can give an example is that, um, for example, we, we feel that, oh, we have to do certain things in order for, for the collective to, um, in order to make a living. So this idea of making a living, that we need a job in order to make a living, that is an idea that we've adopted, that we believed. And because in our mind, we believe it so much that it becomes reality for us. And that is actually not the case. We are always supported by earth. We're always supported by the earth collective. When you are, when you get through this belief of disconnection, when you actually get back to feeling that connection with Earth and with the human collective, you will start to feel their support. And when you can feel their support, you will create that. And you will somehow create a way for the collective to support you. For some people, it's not about making, finding a job. It's actually if you enjoy music. So you go and play music and other people because you're connected to them your music will connect to them as well. And other people, the human collective will support you through donations, through buying your um, musical products, for example, in order to create that income stream to support your continued expression on earth. That's one of the ways that you can create in order for this, the, the, the human collective to support you. So by thinking that we can only um, support ourselves in order because we need a job, that's, that's not true. That's just an idea that we have made real in our mind. And that's the, the reality that we have created for us. So that really is, is about all I want to talk about today. And really to sum it up is that we are here in this moment. Our purpose is really to live and express our unique soul signature to the best of our abilities. And by you living your truth, it will leave a template for the rest of humanity to move forward 
to heal ourselves, our collective trauma. And because the human collective wants this healing, that's why anyone who is living their truth is and is working towards um, creating this template for the human collective, the human collective will automatically support you. And, and the human collective does not mean that they have to be your current um, family or your current employer. The human collective means that you're not just open to a fragment of the collective. It's the whole collective. It's the whole 7 billion of us here. When you are truly connected, then you are truly connected and being part of this whole bigger collective. And it really is very easy for the whole collective to support you, to support one person. And that's how it is. The only reason why um, you have this lack or disconnection is simply because you only limited yourself to a fragment of the collective, only your family, only your friends, only this culture, only this location. But when you are fully connected with earth, all of the whole earth, all of the human collective, when you can become connected to this level of oneness, then you will find that support. And that's how we can all create this and strengthen this template of healing this trauma of disconnection. We let go of that disconnection and get back to connecting with oneness. So that's all I have to share with you this evening.